So my background is broadcasting. Um, I joined the BBC after university and presented a lot of radio programmes, uh, did news reporting, sports commentating, and then moved into television. And it's all been factual stuff, but I like to give it an entertaining spin. And I've sort of developed a reputation as someone that can make information entertaining. And how I got into speaking was, as I was the man from the BBC, I got asked to be the MC for events, so I would introduce lots of speakers across the day. And after about 10 years of doing this, I realised that actually most of the speakers were a bit dull, and I could make them better. So one day, I don't know what made me do it, I went up to a man and I said, do you want me to make your talk better? And he could have been furious, but actually he was really grateful, and he became my first client. And since then, I now help lots of business speakers using techniques from broadcasting, be better and more interesting speakers. So it's called Talking Toolbox, and as well as that being the name of my company, it's the name of this system I've devised, and the idea being that there's a toolbox, and in it there's lots of different tools. I started with about 20, but there's, there's probably about 40 now. Tools that people can use instantly to make them better speakers. So there's a whole section on how to tell stories, because I'm passionate that business people should put more storytelling in their presentations, and not just have PowerPoint slides and facts, more facts and people are falling asleep, there's so many facts. Put some stories in, some case studies, some examples, use props and anything that makes it more interesting. Um, and then engaging your audience, so techniques like using humour uh, and using props, um, all again to make it more entertaining and more engaging. And then a third thing that I think people can benefit from is how to warm up your voice, how to get air into you, how to warm up your lips, warm up your tongue, so that the first words aren't, hello, <coughs> uh, and people get off to a flying start. It's like if you go to a gym, you don't just get straight on the treadmill and start running as fast as you can, you warm up your muscles. And so I do a whole section on that. There's a bit on how to cope with nerves. A lot of business people suddenly get very nervous, and there's techniques that I borrowed from acting um, to, make, to make everyone better. Yeah, so I think one of the things that people are very scared by is how do they start a presentation. So I do a whole section on how to start and grab people's attention right from the start. Because it drives me mad when I see people present and they say, oh, I'm going to talk for about an hour. And instantly everyone goes, oh, really? About an hour? Oh, no. Why not, rather than say how long you're going to talk for, say, this is what you're going to learn from it. This is what you will leave with. And then people think, oh, okay. Well, in that case, I will invest my time. They don't know how long the time is. And then after the hour's up and they've left with something important, they think, yeah, I'm glad I listened to that. But, but why start with how long it's going to be? So uh, that's one of the techniques. And I do a whole section on structures, seven different structures that people can use to, uh, to fit their talk into. Because I think a lot of people, their talk literally just starts with the first slide and finishes with the last slide and, and it just goes along and, and often people give presentations literally just in chronological order. This happened, then this happened, then this happened. And what I teach is ways to grab the attention right from the start with, with seven different structures that might not be, you know, each one might not be perfect for the, for the presentation you're going to deliver but it's much better than having a blank sheet of paper. It's, it's a bit of sort of fill in the gaps would this work for you? Okay, try that. Would this work for you? And then using the elements from those seven structures, I think people can just do a much, much better presentation. Yes, everyone can improve. Not everyone can be a brilliant public speaker, but everyone, if they come to this course, will leave a better speaker than when they came. Um, now, people that, say, work in finance will think, oh, People in my industry, they're not such good speakers. We're better with numbers than we are with words. But it's an opportunity. If you work, say, in the finance industry, if you can become a good speaker, then you'll be a very sought-after speaker because typically people from that sector don't like doing it. So if you can become one of the better ones, you'll be the person that gets asked to speak at conferences. You'll be the person that rises up through your company because you're the person that delivers the message for your company. So. 
I don't think you should think, oh, it's not for me because I, my sector doesn't really do that. You should think, this is a real chance for me because loads of people don't want to do it. If I put myself forward as the person to do it, I can fly in this industry. So I can definitely make anyone better. I can't make everyone brilliant, but I can make everyone the best that they can be. Because if you think of a child walking, you know, when, when a child's learning to walk, they're just over a year old, if they fall over because they're not they're making their first few steps. No one laughs at them and thinks, ha, you can't walk, look at you, you keep falling over. You just think, I imagine if they keep doing this, they'll get better. But when people speak in public, if it goes wrong one time or they don't like it, they never want to do it again. But actually, the best speakers were all bad speakers to start with. They just hung in there. So I can teach you techniques so that you can be much better. You, know, you might not win awards as public speaker of the year, but you're going to be a lot better than before you came. I think because my background's radio, I was used to doing a live three-hour radio show every day, and it, every day would be different. You can't just do the same radio show every day. But um, the great speakers actually do do this, the same speech pretty much every time. If they've got a, a key message they want to get across, they'll they'll deliver that, and they'll deliver it. If they do it at one conference, they'll do it again at another conference a week later because it'll be a different audience, and that for me was a bit of a learning curve. It almost felt like cheating to do the same talk twice because I would never do the same radio show twice. But one of the most prestigious things as a speaker you're going to be asked to do is to speak at a TED event, TED, um, Technology Entertainment Design. And I was asked to speak at a TEDx event, which is an independently organised one. And I practised so hard that every day for a month I did that talk at the same time. So uh, I would it was almost like a muscle memory. I knew that at 4.30 I would deliver that talk. And when I did it, it was, it was the best ever. And I, you know, I got a standing ovation and I got a lovely video of me talking with the famous red Ted letters behind me. And I just thought, actually, it's because I've never really practiced something as hard as that. Because, because of my background, I, I'm quite good at making up as I go along. But I thought, actually, if you plan something, you can be brilliant. And I was brilliant that day. So. Yeah, practice makes perfect. Yeah, so one thing that a lot of people will struggle with is nerves. People get nervous about speaking in front of people. It's probably uh, one of the, in surveys, it comes out as one of the highest fears. Um, there, there's a very famous survey where death, people were, was the third most popular, second most fearful was speaking uh, in public and third was uh, the most popular was um, networking, people are scared of walking into a room that they don't know. So people are actually more scared of public speaking than they are of dying, which seems a bit dark to me. Um, so there's a few things you can do with that. One is, I would suggest if you're speaking to a room, go and sit in that room before you speak and get used to the room. Watch the people coming in, sitting down. You know, if there's maybe a hundred people in the audience, if you've watched every single one are coming in, sitting down, yeah. look them in the eye, maybe say hello. Um, no one's scary on a one-to-one -one basis, and all a hundred people is is a hundred individuals. But people always worry, what will they think of me? The audience don't think anything about you. All they care about is what you're going to do for them. And once you realise that, then you stop focusing on yourself and focus on your content. Then that's a lot less scary. And I'll, I'll teach some visualisation techniques, I'll teach some warm-up techniques so you can warm up your voice with things like bob, 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 and bab, 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 and la, 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 la. Warm up your tongue, warm up your lips, get some air in your lungs with some breathing. <gasps> things like that. And I, uh, my favourite one, which people always laugh at, is the wee, oh, where you make sure that you can say all the high sounds and all the low sounds. Because when I used to present on the BBC, I used to do the afternoon show and my opening words used to be, Hello, I'm Jeremy Nicholas. And it was because I was just nervous at the start. And then I changed it to good afternoon because on the g sound, my voice would never go funny, but on the hello, it would always go high. So just little techniques like that. And really what I'd say to people is if you go to Germany, you might learn to speak German. But people think they can go and speak to an audience without any preparation or training or anything. If you're an important person in your company and you want to look good in front of an audience, get some training. Not necessarily from me, but from someone. Don't just think you can wing it. 
because it would be like going to Germany and going, hello, how are you? You know, they're thinking that that's going to work. It's not. You need to learn German and you need to learn how to speak in public. Yeah. So if you're thinking of coming along and you're not sure, first of all, as well as being very educational and informative, it will be entertaining because my background, I have worked as a stand-up comedian and I've done a lot of after dinner speaking, so I've got a whole load of stories, so it'll be fun. Just when you're thinking, oh, it's going on a bit, I'll tell you a story and then you'll be laughing so much you'll hardly be able to write the next bit down. It'll be fun. So that's a good thing. Uh, don't worry if English is your second language because I'll speak very slowly and clearly and I've worked for the BBC long enough, I used to present on the World Service, so you will be able to understand everything I say. And I do tailor it to an international audience, I won't just be talking about British things, but it, it will be fine for people from all cultures and, uh, and countries. Um, if you are going to come along, I just ask you to bring a few things with you. One is a notebook, because I want you to write loads of stuff down. I will give you some handouts, but I'd like to write loads of things down because I think people take it in more if they're writing it down. So bring an open notebook and an open mind because we, I want to stretch you. you know, and it, for some of you it will be a bit painful, but I think at the end everyone enjoys it, everyone says it's useful. Um, and please come along and be prepared to speak in front of a group. It's not just something to watch, it's something to take part. So. Um, I like everyone to give me the first five minutes of a presentation that they've already delivered. So it can be on any subject, it can be to do with your business, it can be to do with a hobby if you don't want to talk about your business. But five minutes of something, it can have PowerPoint slides, it doesn't have to. Just something so that I can watch you and say, right, this is how you could do that better. And as well as bringing along the first five minutes of a presentation, if you could just come along with a real life story something that's happened to you in real life that you couldn't relate so that I can then see how you talk when you're not talking business. Um, and yeah, do book because it will be fun and you will think that's been really useful.